We're live. Has your purpose? <laughs> All right, so yesterday morning, uh, you woke up and decided instead of traveling back to the towns to instead check out this uh, small mark on your map that you had uh, copied from a crudely drawn map on the ferry in East Haven, of which some Zwergar were inhabiting. Uh, going against the warning from the soothsayer Hethel, who died moments after telling y'all about her vision, um, about testing your metal in the far reaches of Icewind Dale before heading to Zardarok Sunblight's fortress in the line of the world, y'all headed out from Celestine's home and uh, started heading out to the east to figure out what this mark on the map might be. Um, Arden asked if he could lead, get the uh, party back on track after a slight detour, and at the end of the day, Noah found what he believed was a suitable cave to settle in for the night. Uh, it was extremely spacious and void of any creatures whatsoever. The perfect place for a group of adventurers to huddle in for the night. Or not. During Nowhere's watch, some spiders slowly descended on the rest of the party after Nowhere decided to walk to the entrance of this large cave. Celestine felt the legs of spiders crawling over her face and woke up just in time to see a swarm of spiders all bite Clotta and Infant. The rest woke up within a few seconds and quickly defeated the intruders. If you can call them that, because... Technically, y'all were the intruders on their cave, but whatever. Uh, Celestine decided to take the next four hours of watch as the rest of the Sun Chasers caught up on the rest of their sleep. This morning, after about four hours of travel, party uh, y'all rounded a leg of this mountain and followed a trail up the mountain for about another two hours. Uh, getting just above a layer of clouds, and before you is a stone fortress. Um, embedded in the side of the mountain. The staircase leading up to the fortress is about five feet wide and seems to go forever at a steep angle. Looking upon this magnificent fortress, you cannot help but to wonder how tall it really is. It seems to climb hundreds of feet into the mountainside. Um, also from last week, just for Claudette's to know, uh, I marked on your bio page. Um, you collected or harvested... Uh, Four vials of wolf spider venom and five vials of uh, phase spider venom and one phase spider ethereal spindle. Okie dokie. We figured we fought spiders, we couldn't go let the opportunity for you to get more poisons disappear, so. Thank you, I appreciate that. We made it a point to... to... ask this guy. Ask Claudette if you're able to apply poisons to magical weapons. I believe I am. Beyond the snowy foothills, low-lying clouds obscure the icy peaks of the gargantuan mountains that 
form the spine of the world. Eventually you get above the clouds and behold a sheer mountain wall rising more than a hundred feet before you. Carved high on the wall are rows of arrow slits with lights burning behind them and clanking sounds issuing from them. A narrow staircase hewn from the rock leads up along one side of the wall. I guess we go that way. Follows, but is seriously remembering the don't go here until after you go somewhere else warning. Just saying that as we head towards this thing. We don't know that that, that, that this is that, called that place. Or this is what that place is called. Um... We have, uh, in the past, uh, used Claudette's services to uh, scout out things. And I'm thinking maybe this would be a good time again for her to ascend that stairway. And to do that, I'm going to propose that uh, she... Uh, do it after I cast invisibility upon her. That way she could walk up that stairway without being seen. Okay. Can I check for traps? There are no traps. Awesome. Okay. Would I be able to walk up the walls of this building? It's a mountain. It's a mountain. Okay. And currently you are... Um, Are there vertical surfaces? Uh, not really. It's it's a mountain. You got a staircase and a mountain. Okay. The one limiting factor on this uh, invisibility is it can only be cast for one hour. So. Uh, I'm offering it just in the hopes that we could do something, but if an hour and you don't think is long enough to do this, then I guess not. Just kind of showing us what the cliff looks like. Where the cliff really goes all the way over there. That's basically what you're looking at, the stairs in the middle. Look to be about five feet wide, and they climb about 150 feet to a shelf that adjoins the uh, main entrance of the building. Okay, I should be able to take 150 feet with no problem. When you're ready, let me know. I'm ready. What's the furthest you guys can see? Sixty for me. 
like well, I in darkness. I'm gonna <laughs> go up the first sixty feet. Did you say it was getting dark, Sky? Hey. Um, it's been about six hours, so it's probably middle of your three and a half hours of sunlight. Okay. So. Not that it's really sunlight, would say dawn ish. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll go 50 feet. <laughs> okay. I've, uh. Wait, I'll use. Oh, yes. I will use my. I've still got that Psy Crystal, correct? Uh, you don't have it attuned right now. Shit. But you do have... I don't know if you have tuned to it or not, but I... Or if it, just that. The Helm of tel Telepathy? The Helm the... of Living Space Slug. Yes. Yeah, yeah that I, I have a question. That's because I don't know if this is out of character or in character. Sky would have to... Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, okay. Actually, I'll text it to Sky real quick. Okay, so, I mean, if I'm invisible, y'all can't see me wave my arms and say it's safe. So I'm just going to go up the other 150. And see if we can make it to the building unscathed. Okay, so uh, cast that spell and reach out and touch Claudette. So she should now be invisible. So check out the building and let us know what you have learned. Alright, just waiting for Sky to get back so that I can go the 150 feet up this ladder thingy. Alright, uh, yeah, you can hit up the uh, stairs. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and see if there's any traps on the building. Um, go and give me an investigation. Uh, you do not see any traps on the building. Do I see any people, any creatures, anything that's living? Uh, no. You can hear probably grunts. Coming from the arrow slits, uh, you see that it is lit inside, um, but outside of that, there's no nothing, nothing going on up there. Okay, so let me scale the building and go look inside the arrow slits to see what's going on inside the, the building. Okay. Um...
in one of the arrow slits, you see uh, some braziers uh, heaped with glowing hot coals. Um, contains a large stone bed covered with soup stained furs. Um, the foot of the bed is a flat topped iron trunk. Um, with a door a stone door at the end of the western wall. But I see nobody working on these things. Uh, not in this room. Um, I'll walk across to the next one and look at This one, a floor to ceiling iron cage in the middle of the room is probably the uh, best, uh, best thing that you can see. Um, it contains what looks to be like a pulley system um, with a shaft with chains running up and down. Is there anybody in the cage? Or anything in the cage? No. They're probably going to put me in that cage. It, I mean, in real life, it looks like an elevator. Oh, okay. But, like a pulley system thing. Is that the only two windows to look in? Um, there's some up higher. To take out my iPhone 14 Pro Plus and take pictures of everything I see in the windows. Good luck. <laughs> An earthquake might happen and you might fall off this building. Um, directly above the room with the uh, Uh, initial elevator shaft thingy that you saw um, is the other end of the shaft or one of the other ends of the shaft um, and in a large room with machinery filling uh, most of the room and you see a Dwergar standing in front of a double door in the north wall. And another... Yeah, oh, you see that. So, yeah, you just see the uh, Dwergar in the north wall. That covered both windows? Uh, the other window, you'll see a bunch of machinery and you won't see anybody in there. Okay gonna move down, go back down to the bottom of the ladder, and tell everybody what I saw. Especially the fact that there, I only noticed one Dwargar, but there's a lot of machinery and it's gotta be run by somebody. And there's an elevator. Well, a shaft looking thing that looks like it transports people up and down. Uh, I know you went up the ladder, but is there any opening on the top? If you go up there, you will not find anything. Okay, so I look at you and I say, I don't think I would find anything. I'm actually pretty sure I wouldn't. The building did not have a sky roof. Okay, uh, so the only way is the elevator to get in? Did I see a door? 
Oh yeah, so at the bottom you saw um, a 10 foot high double door of featureless stone. Okay, so I saw the 10 feet high door. I saw a door guard. Um, saw a lot of machinery that possibly a lot of people run. Did not see any cauldron of food. Uh, did not see anything that we're looking for. Actually, I should say the very top has another set of, like, double doors. Uh, like iron gates or something that are closed and don't know how to open. Hmm. That's probably what they throw people out of. Mm hmm. So I've relayed all this back to you guys. I go where you guys say. I can open doors. <sighs> Yep. <laughs> or we can knock. I was gonna say we could knock and see if they would let us in. We could just say that we got lost. We saw the lights from the windows and Celestine. Nowhere. You can uh, talk to one person at a time, but. Oh, I thought I went all the way back down and told them everything I saw. Oh, okay. Yeah. We can go with that. Because we never agreed that the thing got attuned, so I'm pretending like it didn't. And okay. I walked all the way back down. I mean, we can. We can try to knock and. Say hello to whoever's inside, but my experience combination of the Duergar plus you now I'll, I'll kind of look around the area plus the um, uh, what uh, my mind just went blank. What is the word? Considering the fact that this is out in the middle of nowhere, I'm, I'm guessing these people probably are here and want their privacy. And just knocking on the door might, just out of nowhere, just might cause some annoyance. But if that's what you guys want to do, and I'll clap looking on the back. You're good at annoying people. <laughs> I guess we'll see what we see when we open up the door. Walk over and open the door. First I see if it's locked. Then I open it. If I can. So is everybody going up the staircase or just Silicon or I suppose we will I I'm gonna follow them. I don't know if the rest of them are coming. Cause the last time we got separated, it took a while for us to all get back together. Sure, let's go together. Yeah. Okay. It'll be fun. We can always run. Yeah, or kill him. So as you all get up there, uh, top of the stairs leads you to the uh, entrance of the fortress. Ten foot high double door of featureless stone. And an arrow slit facing in your direction guard, uh, guards the approach. But you see no, no nobody in that arrow slit. Uh, art in nowhere. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you kept an eye on that narrow slit. If you even see a shadow moving in there, let us know. Okay. Alright, well, I'll 
I'll draw my bow and uh, pardon me, I'll take out my bow and uh, knock an arrow and just kind of rest it in that slot. The idea being that if I see something that looks threatening, I'll just loose the arrow. I'll do the same thing, but I'll step off to the side so that we can do a repeat fire one right after the other. Wait, is the, the arrow set low if enough for you to actually look through? No. You said it was. No, you, you can see in, but it's not at, at your height. Yeah, I, I just asked you to keep an eye on it. I, you know, watch it, you know? I, I didn't mean that, you know. Okay, you well. Right. I didn't figure it was going to go anywhere, so I thought you meant to and try to protect against something happening there. Never mind. I take it back. I didn't say it. Okay. Anyway, we'll keep an eye on it. Thank you, Arden. All right, so that's, oops, that I did not mean to, yeah, that's fine, whatever. Um, Pretty picture. <laughs> okay, so you see the arrow slits up, uh, like, halfway up the thing? That's what you, that's the first level of arrow slits that you see. Oh. So they don't look like we could just stand there and look in. Correct. Uh, okay, well, I'll keep an eye on them, but I mean, the best we're going to do, I think, is if some creature passes between the, the slit and the light, we should see it darken. That's about it. So I guess I don't really need this bow out. Maybe possibly give us enough warning to take cover before we're shot? That might be possible. <laughs> we'll try anyway. Okay. <laughs> now we won't try to shoot you. Okay. We will try to warn you. <laughs> you take all the fun out of it. I don't know if my head is going to survive tonight. <laughs> Good thing we're only in that afternoon for the moment. It's, uh... You know, it's early yet. Anything could happen. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> what do you want me to do now, guys? What do you want me to do now, George? What do you want me to do now? I mean, we're trying to knock, aren't we? I mean, isn't that what we decided on? Oh, okay. I thought we were uh, opening the door. So. Sure, he knocks. As you knock, you barely hear a sound. It is solid stone. I look back and say, that didn't work. What do you want me to do? Maybe use the hilt of your weapon and bang against the door. I bang with the club of my, uh, or the wood of my weapon. You hear a clunky sound that is barely heard above the wind. Like hitting a weapon against 
a rock wall. Okay. Then, since I've knocked twice, nothing. I'm going to see if I can open the door. Uh, give me an investigation check. You see no physical way of opening this door from the outside. I don't think we're going to get in today. I come back. I don't know how to open the door. When I knock, I can barely hear the knock myself, let alone if I was on the inside. And nobody's shown any response to what I've done so far. And from what I understand, from what Claudette told us, those are arrow slits not big enough for windows that we can crawl into. Right? I look at Claudette. Actually, I don't look at her. I look for her. Look around as I say that. Put a tag on your sleeve. Was I right about my assumption of not being able to fit through the uh, openings that you do see? I could probably fit through them, but I don't think you would. No. Uh, none of y'all could fit through them. I say we come back later when we have a better idea or we have explosives. What exactly was it that the um, soothsayer said about this? I don't think we have any way of knowing that what the soothsayer said was about this, this location, because we have no idea what this location is. Well, I do know, I do know, I do know on the map we have, it says Spine of the World, Overburn of Rat. And the uh, soothsayer said, don't go near the, sp the uh, tower near the Spine of the World. And this is a big tower. Well, oh, it's a little late now to back out. I mean, crying out loud, half of us are climbing up it. You know, half garden watching slits. <laughs> Where did we meet the soothsayer? Does anyone remember? Wasn't it Claudette that talked to him? <sighs> How much each of you remember from it, I do not know. Uh, but the exact words that she said was, Oh, you have come at last. I have been dreading this moment. I am so tired of trout and life. I have a vision to pass on to you now. But in a way, buried in the spine of the world, is a fortress on the surface. You must gather your strength and prepare by testing yourselves against other horrors in Icewind Dale, where you will not survive infiltrating the fortress. But the Wergar warlord from the Underdark has a crystal machine powered by the still beating heart of a red dragon. Its mighty wings beat with force like you have never seen before. And breath, like the sun, will burn away the rime that has fallen the dale. 
bright enough to burn us all if you do not. I'm sorry, if we do not what? Stop. Her last word was stop before she died of natural causes. It's in chat if you want to read it again. Yeah, I'm looking at you guys and I'm like, Fight of the World, Tower, and there was a... Durgar that she saw. Just say. Not a rocket scientist, or, or sorry. Not a magic scientist, but. And I did see a machine that was kind of running itself. Okay, well. Um. With that, maybe we should uh, regroup and go another direction. I'm not ready to. Uh, in front of Red Dragon. And particularly not a uh, Red Dragon accompanied by Durgars. God knows what else. Okay. So, what's the next place on our itinerary? I'll be right back. I say we go to the east. And because on the map that we saw there was an opening, and then head north. Or a valley, not an opening. Oh, that, uh, the ravine? Yeah, and then head north, and then whatever side we come up on is where we start. I know before we were talking about going to, uh, Good mean or somewhere over there, I can't remember. But since we're on the east side, I know that there was a loop we were going to do. Yeah. We were also talking about going to East Haven. Then that's what I said. Just go straight to East Haven. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. I like that. Fine with me. Let's go. I'll be nice. I'll lead out. As you, uh, as you head down the trail, um, from the staircase, uh, you hear a distant rumble from the other side, and you can kind of feel it. Um, not necessary to make any kind of checks uh, over on this side of the mountain, but you can definitely feel the mountain start to rumble as an avalanche seems to be occurring on the other side. You mean like the south side of the of the valley? Or... Oh, on the west side of the valley. Oh, great. So we're locked in here. We have to go east. Well, east it is then. 
So I grab my gear and start heading east. Oh, Arden. I'll try to help with say survival or nature or any kind of checks like that. Perception, I guess. We'll say that, uh, and it's pretty straightforward. You got mountains on either side of you, pretty close together, and you're blocked on the other way. So, um, yeah, you, uh, not gonna do rolls. Uh, you guys get about to there by your 12 hour mark for the day. Find a place to rest it. Alright, give me a survival check. And a nice small cave to Rustin. I go into the cave and I cast sunlight on my ball and I look around to make sure there's nothing hidden. Wait, you do what? My ball, I cast sunlight. He's using his balls to, to... yeah, I don't know. His drift globe is what he's using. Not letting what happened last time happen today, okay? I don't have I don't have a really good feeling about caves anymore. <laughs> and do I find anything inside the cave or are we good? It's a much smaller cave than last time. Um, just probably about 15 feet back, and it's probably about 10 feet high, and you do not see anything in it. Can I show it off to the others to see if they like it? And if so, just we stay here. I'm back. Welcome back. Can I investigate the cave? Sure. I'm looking for any traps, any spiders, any webs, anything that would say that, you know, I would wake up in the middle of the night and not be comfortable. With the help of the daylight spell that uh, Elkin just cast with his uh, drift globe, um, you find three spiders in there, you know, about a half inch big. Celestine, do I have permission to kill spiders? It's fine. They're small. That's fine. I stump the spiders. They're all dead. And then tell everybody else they can come in.
I would like to continue working on this stud of leather armor that I'm working on. Is that I okay? can help her. Uh, believe you have poisoner's kit instead of leatherworking. Nope, I already had both. I think she's got poisoner kit from being a rogue or something oh, that's or right. that, like that. Uh, leatherworking is her okay. racial skill. I will welcome the, the help if you'd like. Um, my sheet says I'm four hours into the 16 hour project. Yeah, so you've got eight hours of 12 hours on a winter wolf and four out of 16 on a studded leather armor crate cat. Okay, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. I will go with that. Wasn't aware that there were two different things going. advantage. They're not great, but... I don't think there fails. It's a DC 16 for studded leather armor. Um, so you get two hours of progress um, on the armor. Okay, what, what you said something about. So, a certain amount of time on Winter Wolf and then a certain amount of time on Crack Cat? I don't, I don't recall there being two separate projects. Well, I do have another project going. I've got the Carapace currently in the, the vat, but. I don't know when you did the Winter Wolf cloak, but. Um, yeah, I've got it down here as 8 slash 12 Winter Wolf cloak. And then last week you started, or rather, last night technically, um, you started studded leather armor with the Craig Cat. Okay, uh, pretty sure I finished it with a wolf cloak already. I've got it equipped. But that's okay. We can... I'll do it again. Whatever. I know it's not really doing it again, but you know what I mean. I'll just, I'll just go ahead and take it out. Um, that's fine. That's... Maybe I missed something somewhere. Okay. Then I guess I'm done for tonight. I see one in a cave. Is this a cave that I can find any gems from? Whether, you know, it's just... Hey, you know, it's not something you, you make or something.
Can I push the button when I ask that? Yes. Uh, sure. Uh, give me an investigation check. I wasn't going to go too high on the uh, DC, but, uh, Nine, nine does not make it. Yeah, I didn't think so. That's why I, like, I wasn't expecting to begin with. You know, maybe that bigger cave that we were in, if I thought about it. But yeah, no problem. When I'm done helping with the leather working, I'd like to try to attune to the helm of the living space slug. Okay. Now, um, is the monocle also something that we have to attune to? But I can only attune to one thing. The monocle is not something that needs to be attuned to. Okay. Um, and you can have a total of three attuned items. Anyone else want to do anything? I, I would like to do something to work on my skills, but I'm not sure exactly what. I, <clears throat> I don't have any special tools other than a, a thieves' tools. We have a disguise kit. Well, yeah, there's, there's that. Uh, Not really sure how that helps. We yeah. got one. <laughs> That's the problem. I don't know how it helps either. Um. Especially since you have the disguise self spell once a day. Mm hmm. It's a very effective disguise kit. Just, since I've got the home, does anybody want the Psy Crystal? Um, I don't. I'm happy with the three items I'm currently. Attuned to. Um, how about uh, working on improving my athletics and acrobatics, one or both? Is there anyone who would be willing to help train me? If that's the way this guy's doing skill training, I'm proficient in athletics. Yeah, but your four hours were spent on mm -hmm. leather working. Oh, that's true. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. and maybe, um, Arden, would you be willing to? Yeah, I can help you. To help me learn more about survival. Uh, well, I ain't got. To. That's not your thing, huh? No. Stealth is and no. perception. 
I look over and say, I can help you on any of those. Um, what about perception? Yeah, I got it checked as, a, as I got it mastered. I can help you. Well, I don't know on, on those. I mean... I would like to improve my perception, but I'm already, uh, I've already got the check mark on perception, so oh, I don't know if I can do any more. Yeah, I just got much, much, so I don't know if we could, we'd be mm -hmm. advantageous to either one of us. Yeah, well, we. If you're going to do this, I don't want to waste the time. Yeah, if, you, if somebody's uh, proficient in something, they can uh, train somebody else that's not proficient. But it won't mm -hmm. won't help if you're already proficient in it. Yeah, that's what I thought. I um, can train you in the art of deception. The art of deception. Except hmm. that Claudette was helping Celestine the whole time. And helping Celestine. Sorry. Mm -hmm. She's so good, she even deceived herself into deceiving <laughs> you that she could train you. Uh. Okay, well. Maybe next time I could help you either with sleight of hand or deception. Okay, maybe well, like maybe. You to steal from me. Maybe another time, uh. Is there any way I can use the thieves' tools to uh, work on improving my thieving abilities? Or do I need someone to work with to do that? Uh, do I have any locks or anything locked? I think you're already proficient with thieves' tools, aren't you? I mean, if you have these tools, you're proficient with it. Yeah, I think so. Then it's probably not going to help any. Although I guess Sky would be the one to answer that. But yeah, you're you're already proficient in themes tools. So. Okay. Well, the only place I see this. Uh, that I could really use some help is in acrobatics, and it didn't sound like today is the time to do it. So, uh, just table that and know that sometime in the future I need to work on that. Um, well, another possibility might be investigation, but there again, I don't know that anyone has the time or the patience to do that. So maybe I'll just take out my gear and and clean it and sharpen everything and get ready. Another interest of mine would be to provide myself with my own arrows. But I don't have any boyer's tools. You have a, do you have a dagger? The next time we come across any trees, we'll cut a couple and just work on making the sticks. It don't have to be good, but it's still a start. Shafts. Shafts. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, looks like not today, though. So.
So I'll just go through my gear and I'll clean and sharpen everything I have. Make it as usable as possible. gonna make sure my gears cleaned up so it works right Take first watch. We still doing doubles? Oh, that was the other game. Uh, I think the two L's are doing the pulling shift right now. We haven't decided to do doubles uh, or attempt to do as best okay. we can. <laughs> That's up to y'all. I'm up either way. So. Since we haven't discussed it before, I don't want to cross it until yeah. that bridge until we call. Anyway, I'll I'll take second. All right, so let's see him go ahead and give me a perception check. If he's taking seconds, does that mean I? No. I... We're both elves. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, your watch goes uh, successfully. Um, winds whistling into the. Uh, cave slightly uh, through the mountains, uh, but other than that, it's pretty quiet. Uh, yeah, that's it. During the during my watch, I will um, I will uh, walk out of the cave and take a, a wide loop um, trying to keep the cave within dis or within eyesight a cave opening within eyesight the entire time just kind of take a, a wide loop outside just kind of um, walking through the trees and the, the snow just kind of quietly praying to to real fame basically just kind of taking a, a few minutes to myself to to center and I'll after I finish, I'll go ahead and return back to the cave. And... Um, move over to... Arden, kind of... Tap the bottom of his foot with my toe. <clears throat> my turn, huh? Yeah. 
it's a quiet night. N um, nothing really of interest going on. All right. I'll get up. Walk to the front of the cave. And as he does that, I will lay down and go to sleep. watch uh same thing like whistling through the uh mountains and a little bit of a whistle into the cave um goes pretty solid for about uh three three and a half hours and all of a sudden out of nowhere Big oh, giant wings flapping through the uh, through the mm -hmm. valley, and after about two minutes, they're gone. Okay. So, who am I waking up at the end of my shift? Hopefully everybody. Oh, okay. So at the end of my shift, I'm going to wake up everybody. I'll go around tapping them on their foot. I'll walk over to my gear, get it ready, load it up. I look at everybody and say, you know what? I think it's time for us to go head of town. I've got happy fingers. Oh, hats. <laughs> Some people have happy feet. She has happy anybody, fingers. Anybody, uh, everybody has, uh, since we didn't eat last night, everybody have rations or do they need a berry? I have rations. Thank you. I'll take a berry. Yeah, I use a ration. Because I forgot last night, I cast today and I can't. I presume we had a, a long rest. Yes, we got a long rest. And uh, by the end of the long rest, uh, Claudette, you are now attuned. And uh, to your helmet and your your living slug friend. The helm is the living slug. Darn it. Yep. So I'm going to walk to the front of the cave and try to telepathically say good morning to Illican. Say that again. I'm going to telepathically say good morning to Illican. I look around. And then look at her and her her, her hat and then chuckle and say, Good morning. What you want, baby boy? I want your love. Your pet. Okay, Sky, you got a puppy or a kitten? I have nothing. No. I was just I responding to Arden. Cat. I have my cat. He jumped up on wanted attention. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to telepathically say to 
Celestine, this might actually help us communicate a little bit when I have to go scouting ahead. I will try to, I will look at her and just kind of try to think back to her. Good, I'm hope, I'm, I hope it helps and I'm glad we found it for you. So is two-way communication established with this helm? Did I hear her say that? Yep. Awesome um, sauce. Yeah, it allows you to, as an action, cast essentially the detect thought spell uh, from it. And as a bonus action, uh, the person that you're talking to can respond, essentially. Okie dokie. Ooh, can she read thoughts with it? I haven't been able to find it in the compendium, so can you link it again? Um, the actual thing isn't in the compendium because it's uh, something different. It's a reflavored item. Um, but it is in your folder. Uh, at the bottom of your folder. Oh, thank um, you. And they have links to both the detect thought spell as well as the suggestion spell. So you can't just be thinking something and I can hear it. I've actually got to be concentrating on you. So no, well, I can't just randomly hear that you think I'm a bitch. No, I was thinking more of if you, you know, hey, we're, we're getting going into town and there's a guard there. If you concentrate on the guard, would you be able to read what he was thinking? Um, I believe that's how this works. Not that, okay. Hey, I have to think that I'm thinking thoughts to you. But, but he also gets an option to... Do a DC 13 saving. Okay, in character, I look over and you say, that'd be cool and a good way to test while we're going. Try reading my thoughts occasionally to see if I know you're doing it. We'll see what we can do. Is your intelligence <laughs> above three? <laughs> sure, I hope so. This this ought to be fun. <laughs> I don't know. That might be pushing it. So I pack up my bedroll, I look at everybody and I'm like, okay, let's get going. I need to start making more money. Arden, lead the way. Uh, Arton? Yes? You want to give me a perception check for your... Going out... ...for the day. There you go. Are you guys going to stop for lunch or keep going? 
I had my berry in the morning, so I'm not hungry. So if they want to stop, sure. Not like that. I'm good to go. I'm no need to stop. Quick bite to eat. Maybe take 15 of our minutes. Done. And ready to move on. I see woods so, up there. Okay. In checking the helm, I would like to see if I hear any thoughts within 30 feet of us. Okay. So, which creature are you focusing your mind on? Um, I'm not. I'm trying to see if there's any creatures that I can't see that I can get thoughts and know that they're within 30 feet of us. So, when you cast a spell, uh, you can focus your mind on any one creature that you can see within 30 feet of them. Read paragraph four, please. Nice catch. Thank you. Um, High five! Don't push it, Kenny. <laughs> uh oh. No, it's her. She did good homework. I was giving her high five. Check, check. We can what hear was, you. What was that? Okay. Um, you yeah. did not hear any any creatures other than your party inside the uh, thirty feet around you. Okay, okay, let's just keep on moving. We'll try it again in a little bit. So, um, eleven hours gets you to about where you are right now. Um. Um, up ahead of you towards the right, a yawning chasm uh, threatens to devour you as if it were a giant icy maw. The wind sweeping through the mountains can't drown out the inhuman cackling that echoes in the chasm's depths. Boy, everybody else hear that cackling, or is it just in my head? Mm 
Not this time. I hear it too. I grip my uh, weapons. I grip my weapons. Maybe we should go to the left and skirt that way. Unless y'all want to get into a fight, and then we could. I mean, you know, I'm always looking for a fight. I would like to go towards it just because I don't like leaving anything behind. How far off is this, this, um... Chasm. Is chasm? Okay. So how far off is this chasm? Approximately. Three hundred to four hundred feet to the right. Nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah, I heard you. Yeah, we heard you. Okay. I'm having some issues with times and white cap casting. So I, I don't know. I something's going on. Again, that was the Discord probably. But that was the know. first time I heard you though. So. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm. I'm game to go look forward if you guys. Or look at it. Okay. So, since it's probably dark, can I try to stealth? Um, it, it would be more of a, and you're you're in the open, so there's really no place to hide. Um. It's more of a, if you need a stealth roll, I'll ask for a stealth roll. You can okay, okay. attempt in, like, dungeons and stuff to say you're hiding or trying to hide or something like that. And if somebody needs to try and perceive you, then we'll do a stealth roll. Okay. So we'll head towards the cliff. Or chasm. Cautiously. I'll follow her. You know, when, back. when you said cackling, did you mean like hag cackling or hyena cackling? Because I'm kind of hearing hyenas in the soundtrack. Just wondering if that was my imagination. All I hear is wind. Just hyenas could be gnolls. Oh, now I heard something. I'm not 100% certain my character would know that, so maybe I should shut up. Alright, um, let's get closer. It's gonna open for me. Uh, why I'm switching maps?
but the yep. So that is where you're at. Okie dokie. I'm going to look inside and see if there's any traps or anything that we need to be cautious of. Oh, give me an investigation check. There's a trap right there. Oh, yeah. no, never mind, never mind, there's a bone. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just keep on barreling in like we didn't see anything at all. Like, might even walk into a door. I use the telepathic ability to tell Arden that it looks like it's clear. But yeah. mine are bones on the ground. As you get into there, uh, at the west end of the uh, chasm, uh, humanoid skulls are stacked on either side of a cave mouth. It contains icy steps descending into the rock. Uh, blood has been used to draw crude symbols on the skulls. <clears throat> the skulls. Uh, Uh, the skull belong skulls belong to humans, dwarves, goblins, goliaths, and orcs. Uh, the symbol on each skull looks like a three-headed flail. Um, yeah, religion check. You do not recognize the uh, symbol. So I'm waiting to see the others come in behind me. As I told Arden, it was clear. I'm assuming he told the others to come on. Well, if Arden said something, I'll go ahead and go in there. Oh. <clears throat> I, I said I'd wave you guys up to enter the cave, and then I went in. Alright, so I look at Celestine and I say out loud that um, these skulls have, like, these markings on them. I really can't make heads or tails of them. You might want to take a look at it. Um. AFK. Sure, I'll take a look. Oh, uh, would you like me to roll something, Sky? We can't hear you, Sky. I'm not talking. <laughs> that is a very good reason to not be able to hear you. Sorry, I thought you were talking, Arden. No. <laughs> uh, no. Um, I'll take a look at this. These skulls with the symbols. Since she pointed it out and asked my opinion. Do I know anything about this? All right. Um. But uh, as you step into that room, crude steps lead down to a frigid, ten-foot-high cave. Filled with a putrid stench. The uh, mostly broken bones of humanoids and animals lay scattered on the icy floor amid bits of metal and torn strips of leather. I'm 
I'm thinking either he can't hear me or he's pissed off, pissed off at me or something. Can anyone hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. My brain would stop if you were talking to me. Okay, so... I'm trying to talk, ask Guy a question, but he's not responding to me, so I'm guessing he can't hear me. Sky, yeah, can you hear white? Sky, <laughs> can you hear anybody? You sound like he was responding to... Okay, he says he's restarting his computer. Don't leave. <laughs> okay. Last time he had to restart his computer, I sent everyone to break, and he wasn't happy with me. back. Welcome back. This guy is restarting his computer. He'll be right back. I've got to go pee. I'll be back. Thank you for the announcement. Maybe next time you should sell tickets. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, I was trying to ask, tell you that um, Claudette pointed out the skulls to me with these symbols, and I was wondering if I could take a look at them. See if I knew him. Knew okay, him. so, um. What language it is, if I could read it. Alright, so you're looking at the skulls? Yeah. Yeah, the ones with the okay. symbols? Uh, give me a religion check. I'm really not a religious person. It don't look like I am that much either. <laughs> what? Yes, then, or everybody. Uh, anybody that wants to.
Arden, you recognize it as uh, the symbol of Yinogu, the demon lord of gnolls. And that's what I tell him. It's <clears throat> Ian Gold. I'll let everybody know that. Okay. And Claudette, as you get there, uh, crude steps lead down to a frigid, ten-foot-high cave filled with a putrid stench. Mostly broken bones of humanoids and animals lay scattered on the icy floor amid bits of metal and torn strips of leather. Looks over at the when she says order. Can I check for traps or other concoctions? Uh, you can try. Give me an investigation. You don't see anything that looks like a trap that you would recognize. Tell the group that I see that thing in front of me? Sure. I see something up ahead, guys. I don't know what it is, but I see it. And it looks like it's living and breathing. I see it, too. I move forward because I can't see anything. Well, stay... Well, if you want to bring attention to the fact that we're here, be my guest. Doesn't look like a friendly, but, you know, then again. Hey, look, you're going to say, can you read its thoughts? Okay, I'll try. Can I read its thoughts? Uh, surface thoughts as, as of the moment is need more food so guys why uh, sorry just a sec um, need more food promise more food No food seems to exist here. So I'm going to ask it, who promised you more food? Uh, 
Are you asking it in its mind? Yep. Um... Chaiska promise food. Chaiska lead us here. Promise this area has lots of food. Now only snow, endless snow. Okay, guys, they're thinking that we are going to be food, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm going to ask it who Triska is. Um, it will respond with... Chaiska is your follower, and it will get down on its knee. You, if you not know, if you not know Chaiska, then Chaiska lie. Do I know Triska? Nope. Are you uh, telling us what he's saying? Okay, so he says that Triska let them here. Says that Triska promised them food. Says that they don't have food and it's nothing but ice in winter. Says that Triska is our follower and if we don't know Triska, then Triska lied. I look at her softly and I say, "Are you sure that he didn't say he, he's your your follower or our follower?" He doesn't know that there's multiple of us, as far as I know. So he I'm speaks... only in his mind. Yeah, that's that's what he, that's what uh, Ilkin's looking at you like. So he thinks you're a guy. Yeah, quite possible. I have berries that you can feed him, and he'd be full. Give me two berries. I say to it, I came with food. I'm going to bring it to you. It responds in your mind. You are here. You come at last. Lots of prey. Not see. I came for food for you and your companion. I can just walk across this area. Sure. I am coming to you. Oh, we're going to need more berries. So I put out my hand to provide the berry for the first being. It's currently not looking at you, it is looking at this uh, thing back here. I think it's going to want blood. Illican, we're going to need at least 
two more berries. And if the berries don't work, y'all need to be ready to fight. I'm assuming you whispered that in my head. No. I just kind of whispered it to you. Okay. And said it loud enough so that the party could hear, but hopefully quiet enough that the hyenas that are very looking like they want blood don't hear. They give it to him sneakily? Okay, taking berries to hyenas. I came with your berry, and I hold out my hand. You're going to tap it on its shoulder? I said it out loud. Okay. Um... The three others will kind of snarl at you. Please. And the uh, fourth will hold up its hands and kneel in front of you and say, You know, goo. Come, bring food. And I put out my palm and I hold the berry towards him and say, Please, eat. You will be full. That not look like food. Did I not promise you that I would bring you food? It will take the uh, berries and give each of the others berries. Okay. And they will eat them threw them out, and then kind of just kind of spit. I take a step away. Then I'm going to tell telepathically communicate with Illican and say, are you sure that these berries work on all creatures? I will respond, yes, tell them to swallow. Um, Illican, give me an give me a nature check. You would, oh, no, uh, Ilkin, yeah, never mind. Ilkin okay. wouldn't know nothing. <laughs> it's time to roll the ones. Was that nature check open to anyone, or just those two? No, it was just open. It was just open to Elkin. Okay. I was trying to determine whether he would know something when he said that to Claudette. Okay. I'm going to 
going to say, you have to swallow the berry in order for it to be potent. Not taste flesh. Taste strange. Yes, but you will be full and not need to eat. I would not bring something I did not think would fill you up. It swallows it, but it's they're still kind of I don't see this as going well. I'm going to take out my bow, knock an arrow, and take a stance in preparation to being attacked. I agree. I'll take out my spear and shield and get ready. Uh, if if I'm, I'm thinking continuously whether she hears me or not, because she thinks to me or not, I'm thinking continuously. Ask if they are at least full. Ask if they are at least full. Whether they liked it or not is another question. Ask if they are at least full. <laughs> are your bellies not full? It's filling, but. Inogu should know we eat flesh. Are you not Inogu? I go by many names. Rid us of Chaiska. Chaiska not, not, not provide food. Where is Chaiska? Chaiska in her chamber. Okay, and if we do that, if I do that for you, and I provide her as food, you will be happy and let me go? He nods his head. Or it okay. nods its head, or I don't know whether it's a it or a he or... Yeah, I have no idea. All right, now, I'm going to say I will be back getting friends to help. I come back, I say, hey everybody, I struck up a deal with the hyenas here that if we kill Triska and give her as food, they'll leave us alone. So let's go kill Triska. Hopefully she'll be worth killing. Where is she? Up this way somewhere. I see she's also protected. <sighs> the skull and crossbones for? Death. They're dead? Yep. Oh, okay. Um. Uh, nowhere as you get there. Um, 30 feet below the surface, a shelf rock, shelf of rock surrounds the chasm's gaping maw. Its uh, cracked sides, riddled with caves and festooned with sharp rocks, 
farther down in the chasm, you see uh, dead nulls impaled on some of these fang-like protrusions. Manic laughter echoes through the chasm as you look around, the sound ricocheting off the walls that make its own or make its origin impossible to pinpoint. I whisper to whoever's beside me if anybody's still beside me. I, I don't know because everybody's grayed out in my little thing. But gnolls? Are those the same things that were in the uh, tower? You talking about the, the tower we just left? Yeah! No, there's a Duergar. Well, if we take over this place, we can use these guys towards the Duergar. With that, let's go ahead and take a 15 minute break. Be back. Okay, awesome. Okay, okay. All right.
I have returned. Okay. Uh, I get her back. Back. Do we got a penny? Thought I heard his voice. I should specify that um, no, nowhere stepped out here um, that y'all are 30 feet below the surface. You can look up and you can see the uh, night sky with the uh, clouds above you. Okay, uh... Chechna might be a... We may need to proceed with caution. Yeah. Are these uh, creatures we're seeing here? Are they they still basically the the hyena type? Are they they're gnolls? They're impaled on some of the thing like protrusions that are on this level. Oh. Okay, so they're not the same creatures that were in the other cave. Oh, they're the same. Oh. Okay. Why do these have the skull and crossbones on them? Because they are not alive. Because they're impaled. I see. So maybe the ones in the other case should just come over here and eat. are dead. So looking here, do I see any traps, alarms, anything that would let somebody know that we're here? Give me an investigation roll. I would be happy to. Uh, nothing that you recognize as being a trap or anything like that. Uh, it is icy. Um, you are in the elements, but outside of that, not really. Is 
Is that alive? It looks to be alive. I'm looking for Celestine. Looking for what? Celestine. I'm going to concentrate on nowhere so that I don't say this out loud and say, Do you see Celestine? Please don't answer out loud. Just try to answer me telepathically. I think uh, that uh, I do not see her. She must still be in the other cave. Going to come back this way. I'm going to sternly look at the gentle giant and say, do not go any further. I finally see Celestine and I wave with my arms for her to come up. I point out the guy right there. No, not there. We need to move up a little bit more. Maybe up even with this guy. Can you see him in the upper left hand corner now? Other left. Left. That one? Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, I see him. Situated atop the ledge is a cage made of thick timber beams with a bolted iron door and iron fittings. Cage is five feet on a side and seven feet tall. Inside it, a male human in hide armor paces back and forth. It's human. Oh. I'm okay. going to move up a little bit further, because I have to give myself 30 feet to communicate with it. And in the hallway across from us, I notice there are not friendlies, possibly. So I'm going to try to telepathically speak with the human and ask the human, why are you here? And don't answer out loud. Please just answer in your head. I guess the human does not want to speak to us. Uh, I am trying to find stuff. Patience. Young grasshopper. Let him find what he needs to find. Okay, David Carradine. I have a feeling that there is only myself, maybe nowhere, and possibly Ardent that understand that reference. Kung Fu? Oh, you do understand that reference, okay. I'm like 99% sure Kenny does too. Kenny, did you watch David Carradine and Kung Fu? Only. I had to watch it for the, uh, the monk character, so I had to make sure I knew about it. So I purchased it from Amazon all the season. Oh, gun. Yeah. 
It yells at the top of its lungs. Get out, head! Evil creatures! No, actually, we were friendly and thought about rescuing you, but now we'll just leave you in your cage to die. Thank you. You die instead. Lovely. Okay. You're the one in the cage. Have a good night. Okay. I would suggest that we try to get closer together. Me and Martin are standing right next to each other. Oh, okay. He moves. I guess I am. I look at the rest of you and go, we should probably get closer together. Yeah. I am close enough, I think. I see the, yeah. uh, behind us, I see the one move away. Are you ready? And looking, and I point to him. <sighs> Guess it knows its friends are dead now. I don't know what's in that back hallway. Anybody do? No, but he didn't go there. He, no, across the, a little bit over from uh, where the cage is. I know that there's some dead hyenas in there, or whatever they're called. Okay, well, I suggest we go take on the big guy across from us first. He's in a cage. Where is he going to go? I'm not talking about the cage. Cage guy I don't care about. I'm talking about the guy that's directly to our left. Left and south? Left south, yes. Okay. Let's all go that way. Wait, what? What guy? You don't see any guy. Through the little bit of an opening right here, I do see somebody. Uh, just a sec. Hold on. No, I don't. Never mind. And neither do you, Kenny. Huh. <clears throat> yeah, you don't. So I suggest we go the south way. Avoid the guy up at the top who's got a big mouth. <laughs> because I'm tempted to stab him through the cage and kill him anyway. Anybody have any objections to that? Yes. What's your objection? Well, he's in a cage. How would you feel if you been in a cage and you watched... That's why I suggested we go south, because I oh, don't okay. want to stab yeah. them in yeah. the yeah. cage. I misunderstood, yes. Moving right along, let's well, go I'm south. We're going south of us, so I don't see anything, so don't ignore me. I'm <sighs> heading up to catch up with Nowhere, who's speeding right along. Uncharacteristically going way ahead of the group. All right. Just for reference, y'all are going west. Oh, okay. okay. What direction are we going now? The east. To, to the left is north. The, the top is east. The bottom is west. The right, uh, the right is south. Okay. We've got a compass at the bottom of the map. Can you move, Drake? Because I can't. I tap Arden on the shoulder and do like military signals pointing towards something inside this little tunnel here. Give me a stealth check while you get there. Er. 
So as you look in, uh, painted in blood on the walls of this eight-foot-high cave are pictographs of a towering monster with sharp teeth that wields what looks like a three-headed flail. Packs of hyenas feed on the corpses in its wake. A small fire crackles near the south wall, uh, sorry, west wall, uh, filling the cave with smoke. Cooking above the fire is a small green fish, uh, while behind the fire, leaning against the south, uh, the west wall, is a blood-encrusted spear and a fishing pole. I don't know whether to talk telepathically to this or not. It does not look like it would carry a spear. So, I'm going to try to telepathically speak to this and go, Why aren't we giving... What are they? What are those animals? Gnolls. They're not animals, but they're gnolls. Why aren't we giving the gnolls food? No food here. You have food on the fire. Why aren't you giving the gnolls food? They will eat this. We will all eat this. When food we get, food we share. In your teachings. Abundance has waned. Where is Cheska? Get out of head, imposter. Great, we found Cheska, guys. Let's kill him initiative as it looks directly at you guys. I'm working on it. I had to make sure I had my tune selected. So, Steen, that 27 would be nice. Eh. I've rolled them before, I'll roll them again. Just gonna <clears throat> ask everybody that if you see me roll one on damage, please just kind of bring my attention to it. Okay. Uh, Arden and Noah. Yes. You want to join us? Mm 
You mean in the turn order? order? Yeah, you gotta, oh. you gotta ask for initiative. Sorry, I didn't hear you ask for initiative. Yeah, you there? Yeah. Initiate. Yeah, well, my computer just went dead again. Things. There you go. Looking uh, directly towards Claudette and nowhere, it snarls and uh, um, like opens up its uh, hand as it's going to uh, run at you to attack. Looking is your turn. Well, the uh, twenty three hits. I mark it with favorite enemy, her favorite foe. Okay. And I'm removing blast because I don't think anybody's cast it. Hey, Sky. Yep. On Claudette's weapons. This uh, scimitar of wounding is showing that it's piercing damage. Is that accurate? Scimitars are usually slashing. And it's probably slashing. Okay, just double checking. And my Drake will attack at the same time. When I hit it, and then it will bite. Then it will attempt to bite. Uh, that definitely hits.
That is my turn. step in here and come over one more so that if anybody else wants to step in for melee they can that'll hit then we'll do our offhand That will not. That just misses wide, huh? All right. By the way, I set your piercing weapons up with the additional die roll for crits. Okay, okay, thank you. So. I did not roll any ones, so I'm, my turn is done. You could share those ones uh, ability with me. I'm just saying. <laughs> you could be a rogue. <laughs> She's just saying. <laughs> <coughs> right, uh, no worries, you're up. Alright, I'm going to. Fire at this guy. With my longbow of warning. I would say that it has half cover, which ups its AC by two, but you hit anyways. I'm going to include a grasping arrow and a sear with this. Okay. Salston, you're up. Unless Stover's got anything else. No, I, I don't have anything else. I'm just wishing I did more damage. I hear you. Me too. So did the grasping arrow and the the seer not do anything? No. You got 15. Yeah, you have a second attack now, don't you? Yeah, well, yeah actually, yes, I yeah, do. You do. Yes, I do. Uh, I've just... Uh... You say I got 15? Oh, yeah, sorry, 16. Yeah. You, you got... The, if you add all of your numbers together, that's what you got. Okay. And 9, 6, and 1? This is 16, but yes. I've already taken it off their health. So I'm not sure what else you... Okay. Are for there. Okay, I was expecting to see a separate number for the grasping arrow. If you uh, hover if you hover over your 9, it will tell you what you got. You got yeah. 2 from Braces of Archery got a 2d6 grasping arrow which was three 
And you got a 1d6 from Seer, which was a 1. Okay, well, and my second shot then. Um. And that I'm going to include the Grasping Arrow and Seer as well. You can't do that. Oh, that's right. I can't. Never mind. <laughs> okay. So, I'm guessing that uh, 28 hits? Yes, definitely. Four nine. Okay. That's disappointing. <laughs> you know, whatever. Could have natural ones. Just saying. He's not wrong. <laughs> what? I don't know why it's disappointing, but I mean, you're you're you got a two on your one d eight, and the the two above is. Just straight out. The one on the right is just straight out. So the max that you could have gotten was 12, and you got 6. 8 plus 4 is 12, yeah. Okay. It just... <clears throat> he, he le he's expecting to see the big numbers the Lazem puts out. The Lazem's 19. Yes. Yeah, well. And this isn't a video game, so it's just we'll mechanics. Get we'll get there. Right? Hopefully. Eventually, probably. Maybe. Alright. Then I guess that's the end of my turn. Okay. I will move up in front of nowhere. raise my hand and throw it towards the creature lashing out with a thorn whip that will hit 10 points of damage and a uh, And you're pulled ten feet closer to me. Now I'm going to hope that he can't take an attack of opportunity against me if I move up here. Because of the wall and stuff. I'll just go, go there. But if he does, he does. But I'm hoping he doesn't. Uh, that my turn's done. Pardon. I'm gonna attack the guy right here. He moved out of the way. Does Drake get an attack of opportunity? No, he doesn't. Never mind. He did not get moved, or he got moved out. He didn't move. Well, that, he wouldn't have got it because he'd already used his uh, reaction. Yeah. Reaction. I'm marking this favorite foe. Unfortunately, a 16 does not hit. Not hit. Oh, well. I guess he ain't marked. Uh, you gonna make a second attack? Yeah. Maybe it'll work. Where's that? There we go. That one hits. Yeah. Uh, mark your favorite foe. And... Oh. 
All right. Uh, anything else for you? Yeah, I'm gonna move up a little bit. There we go. Uh, how are you moving up there? I gotta click it down here, huh? Actually, it actually it doesn't matter. Um, you're still within five feet there. Um, it's going to attack at you. Yeah, eighteen. Okay. <laughs> yeah, twenty-five hits. Am I considered being able to see him? I can kind of sort of see the corner. I would say probably not on that one. Okay. That is... Okay, never mind. Five and six and eleven. Eleven piercing. And 20 poison. And then I need you to make a DC 12 constitution save. Oh, I guess, oh, it's DC 12 con or take the poison damage. So go ahead and make a con save and slide on the poison in a sec. Who did you bite again? I I'm getting it. No, no, I was making sure it wasn't me that got bit. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, use your constitution saving throw. Pardon. Okay. Oh. Alright, there you go. Uh, so you don't take the poison, so you, all you take is 11 points of piercing damage. Okay. It is going to yell out in some type of language at the top of its lungs. And come back in here. going to bite at Audette and claw at Illican. <clears throat> I'm guessing none of that hits. You had advantage on all that, right, Sky? What's that? You had advantage on all those, right? Yeah. Ignore mm. me. I'm. I'm just. Oh. Sorry. You're just trying. You're just trying to hurt people so that you can heal them. I guess. Be right back. <laughs> I was trying to give you something to do other than get beat up on. I know how much that sucks. Okay, so who was he beating on? Um, the bite was against Claudette, the seven, which I don't think that is. And the two claws were against uh, Illican, 15, and uh, Nat 1, which I'm guessing also didn't hit. No, they don't. And like I said, I'll be right back. That one gets there, looks at the party, and kneels.
and kneels. Illican, your turn. Uh, I guess he's missing. Did you say he kneels? Yep. He thinks we're gods, remember? He thinks you're a god. And I went to get help, and we're attacking. Chess. Chessa. Chessie. We're attacking the, its enemy. That one gets there, and Neil. That one gets there and kneels. And I'll wait for Ken to get back. I will telepathically say to Celestine that, you know, if you use your thorns again, they'll think you're a god too. Ha ha. Actually, you can't do that. No, I can't. But I'll say it out loud. How's that? You can say that on your turn. I'm just trying to remember that I'll say that on my turn. So let's pretend I said it on my turn so that Celestine doesn't forget that I said it on my turn. Because I'm likely to forget that I said anything on my turn that was remotely important. Gotcha. I'm getting serious Scooby-Doo flashbacks. Rut row Shaggy. He may have been a Great Dane, supposedly, but he certainly laughed like a hyena. <laughs> And according to my father, he was very happy when I stopped watching Scooby-Doo. So apparently I started behaving better when I stopped watching Scooby-Doo. <laughs> that is true. Sorry for delay. Back. <laughs> Alright, you are up. Uh, the 27 hits. I believe that's all I can do. I swing tw three times, 
One with my main hand, off hand with my main hand. I finally hit the stupid thing. Grumbling because I can't hit today. And then my, my, my Drake goes, okay, cool. <laughs> Does a little fire dispel. Or breathe. And then tries to bite and screws it up. I will say that uh, the 20 hits. Only because it already is dead. Oh. And it helps if I move it to where he moves. But he died on that? Okay, cool. I'm like, good Drake, good Drake. You helped me kill. So, Koda, it is your turn if you want to attack any of the others. Uh, he is uh, all out of his uh, attacks at the moment. So I'm going to try to push the dead body into the hallway. Right, give me a strength. Or give me an athletics check. Yay! Alright. How far do you want to uh, push it out right in front of Noah? Do you want to do anything? Actually, I should say, does anybody want to do anything uh, to these gnolls that are coming out? Oh no, uh, I'm gonna step back here. Give them I some room. Huh? Do I get tech opportunity on this one? Um, are you wanting to? Yeah, they're, they're friendly. Attack or... Oh, well, you don't... Are... Il Ilican, you you don't see anything. You don't know what's going on out there. Arden, did you see that they bowed when they got to you? They oh, are okay. they are all kneeling currently, so it's up to you whether you want to attack or move or what. And um... ch chance the at uh, attack of opportunity. Uh, it's up to you. I'll move. Okay. It doesn't attack. Good boys. <laughs> Does anybody want to attack them? Is it my turn yet? Did he answer me? I'll see. No, I'm I'm good. Sure, Illican, it is your turn. I ask uh Claudette, which one's gonna get fed? Am I buried before? I think that they all need to be fed, so I was just going to leave the dead body here while we make an exit and leave Mr. Castle in the north left corner. Okay, you're not gonna inspect this area? Sure, I'll come in and investigate the area. I'm allowed to. Uh, yeah, you're out of combat now. Okay. They're going to drag the food off and go eat it somewhere else, possibly, maybe? Because the minute I felt smell, spinal fluid, I might just want to go and eat, too. Just saying. Hey, if you join them, you're, you're a queen to them. You drink some blood, it works. Show them you are one of them. I'm gonna throw the fish out so that they can get it.
Oh, I doubt I found anything worth anything. Um. You. The only thing that you see in the uh, place is the uh, fishing pole and the spear that was uh, sitting by the fire. Anybody want a fishing pole? Uh -huh. Just remember to, you know, equip your sword when you start going into battle. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Wow, reference. Uh, does it collapse or is it just a full? Collapse. I think it's just a fishing pool. Rudimentary fishing pool. Um, I'll go ahead and use a spell slot and cast detect magic. Do I notice any magic in the area when I walk in there with Claudette? The... Find it. You notice a teeny tiny little bit of magic hanging off the end of the uh, fishing pole that is giving you conjuration magic. Okay. Um... I'm assuming, as I look closer, I see a hook there. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll kind of point at it and look at, at Illic and be like, this is magical. Can you identify real quick? Touch it with the rock. That is what you come up with. Good for getting fish. We like the fish. We should keep this. And if no one else picks it up, I will. <clears throat> Put it on my carry case. And while we're all here, he does say, well, I think we should release the uh, the man from the cage. I don't want to piss off the little critters, okay? We're doing just fine the way we are. If it was somebody of you, I'd still say the same thing. We should yeah. let him out. And... I like slavery. I know you <laughs> don't slavery. like slavery, but did you hear how rude he was to us? No, I didn't. He was not in my head. He was yelling it out loud. Well, would you, you, I've been a slave before. I'd do the same thing. I didn't like it when you said you were a slave and it angered me. It angers me now. Then you go let him out. He's going to attack you and we're going to have another fight. Okay, I give him chance. Then I kill him.
and I open the case. As wait, as you, um. As you get into view, he stops pacing, looks at you, his murderous eyes lock onto uh, you, and he clutches a javelin made of a black crystalline substance. The skin on his hands and face is black from frostbite, and his lips are chapped and bleeding from the cold. Are you still unlocking it? Yeah, I'm thinking for a moment. I tap him on the shoulder and say, we got a reprieve from the rules. I don't know that we yeah. really want to take a chance yes. fighting with this guy. Hoping it'd be a one or a two. I really want. He opens it. He opens it. Okay. Because yeah. if it was one or two, he'd kill him to put him out of his misery. Alright. Um. As you get into his space. Ah, oh, freaking hell. Damn it, just a second. <laughs> Alright, so, as you get into space and you, uh, Unlock the cage. I'm guessing you're uh, forcing it. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, give me an athletics check. Yeah, not an issue. He tries to attack you and misses, obviously. Roll initiative. Everybody. Oh, I need my character at least. <laughs> I was hoping that'd be a one or two, because I was gonna kill him. Put him out of his misery. Still missing some people. Me. Um, I had to reboot my computer. Oh, well, isn't that fun? Oh, it's just lovely. <laughs> Illican, is there a reason you rolled initiative on Drake instead of Illican? You think we should kill this guy or try to heal him? He 
Look, and you're gonna me give me another roll. For what? Because you rolled initiative on Drake instead of Illican. Oh, I did. I You're, you're up first, Elgin. That was a missed punch. Right. Um. All three hit. Marking him as favorite pose, well then. Yeah, my, 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 my second to last one. Alright, uh, so all three hit, not four, but... Um... Yeah, I didn't see the two... Po I was counting up, but I'm like, okay, and I only saw the uh, Illican, and I didn't see the one after. for you yes now once i get i will be able to do it yes once again <laughs> uh, the eight does not hit okay those are my hits drake's doing pretty good today <laughs> Walking away for two. Uh, Arden, your turn. Okay. I'm, I'm working around the critter. Where is everybody at? They way up north, huh? Yep. Okay. Who are we fighting? It's getting hard to tell who's who. Oh, okay. That one up there. Ha ha ha. Uh, how much speed do you got? 35. Okay, cool. Alright. I'm gonna, I'm gonna engage the wolf, the guy right there. Okay. Soon as my... With my bow. That is a hit. girlfriend cooked and just made the meal, so I had to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am assuming that those didn't didn't kill him. Did not kill him. <laughs> but he is barely standing. Well I'm gonna engage. Do you have another with... attack? I'll gauge again with the bow. And that will hit. How does it die? Oh, the arrow goes right through his right eye. 
and out the back of his left hand, side of his head as blood flows out. <laughs> I don't know if I have to jump for this, but I'm just going to knock Pelican upside the head and say, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> he takes it without complaint. But then he also points to the shaft and says, new tool. <sighs> it's all yours, Hulikin. Hulikin, why don't you drag the human to the <coughs> knolls so they have more blood? Do you, wait, he looks at you and says, are you thirsty? No, I would like to leave this cave as soon as possible. <laughs> and he points to the open cave of uh to uh since it's been under 10 minutes he points to the open game of celeste celestine and says there's another spot here if you want to use your skill to see if there's something in it oh i do want to check and see if there's any money in his pockets hmm. uh give me an investigation check You find uh, pin silver in the somewhere in the armor in his hide armor. I found ten silver. Does anybody want it, or can I just keep it until later? You keep it. You keep it. I'll collect the hide armor and the weapon that he had. Good. And this is the room that I'm pointing to Celestine when I tell her about the area that she can check if she still wanted to. I've got a bio. Be back. No, let's just get out of here. Anybody know where these uh, creatures are? Y'all saw them taking the uh, body towards the entrance. Okay, I pick up the body here with me, and I carry him to the entrance. Or try to. Yeah. You'll get him. Since they said they're leaving, I'm bringing him to the body. <coughs> Bless you. Sorry. That wasn't supposed to be on the mic. Sometimes you just don't get to him soon enough. Or it soon enough. Whatever. I bring the body to drop it off in the back room for them. You can probably tell that as you get in this room that this is their feasting room because it's littered with bones. Okay. Then I throw it down here.
You'll have to move my guy out. I'm stuck. Nilkin okay, will say, I've been stuck in cage too long. I'm back. Welcome back. How did they react to us giving them more food? They seemed happy. They didn't try to kill Illican, so I'm assuming not too too upset about it. So shall we try to get to like civilization so I can steal from people? Sure, why not? I love how our cleric says, sure, yeah. you can steal from people. Since we're all done killing things. Claudette's not a cleric. She's a rogue. Oh. Talk about you, Celestine. I didn't She's say... not a cleric. She's a druid. Yeah. Oh. There are no clerics here. And while she may be good, maybe she's chaotic good, and she doesn't mind it as long as the party is benefiting from the... Uh, Looting. Shit, you're stealing from humans? I don't give a damn. Go for it. As long as you don't screw me over, I'm okay. I don't care. <laughs> Start stealing from animals, we might have something to talk about. Well, that human was more animal than he was human. Well, when we get to this area right here, my guy does have something to do. Okay. Um, so I'd say you spent about an hour in there, so you're sitting about your 12-hour mark at the moment. He laughs and looks, does anybody want to go back in there and stay? Uh, no, thank you. Let's go ahead and head towards town. Maybe we can find a nice snowbank or something to stay in. Okay, so I guess we're going to start walking north. So I can I guesstimate how long um, until we get to a town? <clears throat> okay. Uh, sure. But uh, give me... Survival or nature, your choice. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you think about two days. You mm. walk straight north and you don't detour. Um, you think you can get to East Haven in about two days. Okay. Um, I think East Haven is probably the closest to us at the moment. Uh, it should be straight north of us, approximately two days or so. However, we just accomplished the task that we were going to East Haven for, so. Um. Yeah. If you guys want to do something else instead, I'm open to. You don't have to remember what we were going to East Haven for, you might forget. We were going to East Haven to talk to some hunters to find out where the gnolls were who killed uh, Nibira, uh Morskull for her enchanted fish hook, which you are currently holding. I'm assuming. I mean, unless there's 
two enchanted fish hooks being held by gnolls. Mm, good Which, point. you know, not impossible. Sadly, it doesn't seem like it was the gnolls that took it. Doesn't look like maybe they were put up to it, though. Maybe they could have been put up to it, though. Their leader is the one that took it, because they were catching fish with it. Yeah, Cheska. Yeah, but she could have made them take it, promising them food. Wasn't she a knoll, too? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Can we Can we march for at least, you know, until we get to that bush over there, those line of mountains, dust covering of I don't know what that prevents our view from the other side of the world. Let, let's head north for a little while. We, we can just, we can say we were discussing this while we were marching, moving, whatever. I like that idea. At Rough. least for another, they said it was 12 hours, so another six and a walking day would give us at least eight hours of sleep. I think. Um... No, that's another four. Uh, oh. Give us four hours of sleep. If it's at noon now. Yeah, you'd have to... Uh, no, you're you're sitting at your 12-hour mark, not noon. Oh. Um, so, so, typically this is about the time that you would look for a place to rest and have four hours of downtime. Um, you can continue to walk for another four hours if you would like. That seems reasonable. Let's get on north. And... Okay. I know Illican's looking forward to that frost covering that is preventing us from seeing the other side of whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's go. And I point in the direction of what appears to be trees on a map. Yeah. Er, who's leading y'all? I guess I'll lead again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the map. You know, we need to go to East Haven anyway to report that we've recovered that magic hook and dispatch the gnolls. He looks over. I don't think we need to tell him we dispatched the gnolls. But we got the magic fishing. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure there's anyone to report to but okay we, we go to East Haven yeah we get there and, and we heard it in a bar or a tavern we, we go back to the same cavern and say we did it and not really looking for a reward but you never know All right, so after four hours, you get to a little uh, spot with some trees. Then we crash here for the night, and then the more. Uh, are you able? He looks. Anybody able to uh, start a fire? I'll go? I'll go out and gather some wood. I will pull out my spear and. Light the tip. This is the tip. Um, Arden, give me a survival roll. I will help with the uh, firewood. With advantage. Not only do you find wood, you find just the tip. Um, anyways. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> in the gutter tonight. And, well, every night. But... I feel like it's not me, because first someone said, hey, let's go find wood, and then White says, I'm going to light my spear tip. <laughs> 
and I just connected the dots between both y'all. <laughs> You're sick. Okay, so we got the fire going. <sighs> um, you got wood. Uh, how long are you going to go out and find wood for? Oh, uh, no more than an hour. Okay. Well, it, it, remember, it's it's like ten o'clock at night. I have dark vision. I can see. Besides that, there's trees right here. Why don't we just yeah, I know. cut them down or break it off? Break the break the dead branches off. So anyway, well, okay. he looks over. At, he looks over at uh, because because he talked about branches. He looks over at uh, nowhere. You were wanting to make arrows. There's a bunch of trees here. <laughs> just make sure yeah. they're dead branches. Try not to hurt the trees. Looks at the forest. That's, that's what I said. I, I break off the dead branches and okay. pick up the branches on the ground. Because okay. I got dark vision. I can do that. I, I appreciate your, your compassion, Arden. I really do. Yeah. So, with the 20, uh, both of y'all find enough wood for, uh, for a fire for the night. Uh, dead, already dead branches. Or trees that you knock branches off. Thank you. And I'll pick a spot a little ways away from the fire to set up my my sleeping bag. Pulling first watch, he's pulling second. I'll take first. It's your turn nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> My turn for what? To pull the next watch. <laughs> well. I can pull a watch with him. Yeah, that's fine. Why are you volunteering me? Because I didn't want to do it. <laughs> it's not called volunteer. It's called voluntold. Yeah. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Whatever works. So who's taking first watch? I will. And I guess who's taking second? Te I guess technically me. I'm taking first and second. Uh -huh. So taking the third one? Nowhere. Oh. Apparently. Apparently. I'll take the I'll fourth take... one. Okay. I'll sleep for the whole night then. Me too. Alright. Go ahead and give me a perception check for Celestine. Uh, calm night uh, in the trees uh, definitely frigid um, fire is definitely radiating at least a little more heat than you are used to um, but as you're kind of out in the open uh, little bits of the trees are blocking some of the wind but uh As far as your uh, watch goes off without a hitch. Okay. Um, I will, uh, during my watch, I'll just, I'll leave my, my shield and the rest of my pack by my bed, bedroll, 
and with my spear I'll just um, basically do some, essentially shadow boxing with a weapon not really attacking anything but but air but just practicing I guess yeah kata I guess even though that's usually martial arts but that's okay um and when I'm done I'm of course all sweaty but um I will um wake nowhere and then I will <laughs> sorry go ahead I'm just going to say I get up and you know kind of I rub it my eyes and realize I got to get up now and I go and I stir the fire and add some more wood to it. Okay. And... Give me a perception check. Uh, it, was a um, quiet, it was a quiet night so far. Well, that's uh, good. I hope it remains that way. Um, sorry, Sky. I'm not I wasn't quite finished. After waking nowhere and reporting, I will um, take some stuff out of my bag and go off into the trees. Um, and use some snow and um, use it, the, the heat from my, uh, the spell on my sphere to, to melt some snow and heat it up enough to could basically bathe. Hmm. Then return probably 10, 15 minutes later. And go to sleep. Uh, nowhere your watch is equally as frigid and no, come on. Um, and quiet as uh, Celestine's was. Um, eerily quiet. The uh, wind is not blowing, um, not snowing, no clouds in the sky at the moment, and uh, just frigid with the exception of the uh, heat of the fire. Okay, well, I'm always thankful for a quiet night. Your, your watch goes off without a hitch. Thank you. And who am I supposed to wake? Elican. Okay, I'll go over. Uh, to Elican and shake him awake and and I tell him that all's quiet, there's been no problems. Good night and I go roll into my bed rail right away. I smile and get up, get all my gear nice and situated, and then go stir the fire and start my shift walking around. Perception. Uh, same thing. 
a chilly night with the uh, slight warmth coming out of the fire. And uh, I let everybody sleep for a little bit extra in the morning then. And then I'll go look for more firewood to carry with us. While we're heading to town, still be another two more days. Uh, how long are you going out to look for? Not now. Just like I said, I'm staying around camp, but I'm checking for about a uh, just just an hour. That never may sleep for an extra hour. I think everybody needs it. Okay, give me a survival check. You are able to find enough wood for one more nut. I bind it all up, and then I go around waking everybody up. <sighs> Wake up. Roll up my gear. Get ready to go. I ask uh, nowhere if you want to look for any uh, potential arrows before we head out. Elkin, roll me a no. 1d6. Alright, you're good. Get up. Get my bed rolled together. Put out the fire. Would making arrows just be something that somebody proficient with survival could do? Or is that something that would require specific tools, Sky? It would probably uh, require some woodworking tools that you guys could possibly pick up in a town. Probably a larger town than, a, than anything. Okay. Um, so I guess let's head out. I start heading out. All right, I, I wait. And look, and if we're all ready to go, I follow uh, the, the, the Arden. And... I lead off heading north. All right. Just out of curiosity, how did Arden become the leader of this group? He's, <laughs> because he's got the uh, full six foot by six foot map. Oh, okay. <laughs> of the whole area, as opposed to Claudette's map that you're about to enter the area of. Okay, it's just. I remember right, he, he's not proficient in, in survival. No, I'm not. Well, I guess you're asking for perception anyway, so. Yeah. So, that's irrelevant. <laughs> Just I understand him being the leader on Riarden, because... He and well, both the rogues are really good frontliner or um, scouts. Can be. I don't know. I'll, I'll shut up. I'm, I'm at this point. I'm literally just talking to talk. He became the leader when I started going the wrong direction, and he had the bigger map. Okay. 
cool. So, um, assuming you are not stopping for lunch again? No. Nah. Nah. Okay. Nah. Then you will get to there, I think. Wait, maybe. Yeah. Um, get to about there. Uh, Throughout the day, let me see. Yep. No big issues. When we get to where we're going, I'll start setting up a fire. Uh, give me a survival check if you're looking for a space. All right, you're able to find a nice, suitable place. Set up the firewood. And... I dig a little bit of a. I do dig up a little bit of a um, wind crop. Or a wind buff area. And I'll help. Just to keep us really warm tonight. Since we don't have the trees to block us. Wind break. That's what I was trying to think. Yeah. Okay. Yep, you get a nice little wind break area and uh, set up your fire. Um, and it is 559, so we will pick it up right before your uh rest next week <sighs> thank you all for the game tonight certainly yeah. have a good night all right, guys. All right. have a great have, one have a good one guys enjoy this wonderful uh enchilada enjoy this mm -hmm. you had to give me a cursed thing again huh you just had to you're the one that took it. You'll never learn. Nope. I will admit, no, he won't. He's an idiot. Her eyes took over and said, Loot! Mine! Actually, he's thinking, pick this up, give it to, uh, go to town, get rid of it. That's what he's thinking. So you're going to give it to an unsuspecting shopkeeper? Yeah. Hey, I, I'm unsuspecting as well, so I don't know what you're talking about. You know that it's, it's cursed because... Last time, no, 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 no. You spent an entire I, half a session, or like three fourths of a session, figuring yeah. out what all the cursed items were. Yes, but this is not one of the items. Yes, it is. The Chardeline javelin. That is one of the items we had. We had what three or four of them. Completely, out of character here. You just killed a Chardeline berserker. And took its Chardeline spear. Okay, so the spear would look like the ones that we had already dealt with before. Yes. Okay, yes, yeah. and I made particular. I, I um, understand that. So I well, specified did. that he clutched a javelin made of a black crystalline substance. I said I didn't catch I didn't understand that. And at that point the entire freaking party said, Ah, okay. This one said no, I don't understand. <laughs> I mean everyone got it, oh, dude, oh, except oh, for you. <laughs> but we'll know that as soon as something bad happens.
Like I said, uh, even the player didn't understand that. I so. think I, th I think we'll find somebody that knows about cursed items to give and sell it to. Nope, can't do that. <laughs> Nobody knows about cursed items anywhere. How do you know? White, there... white, white uh, whispered me, it's like, for fuck's sake, shaking my head. And I'm like, well, at least you didn't find any other weapons. <laughs> the, the, the book said that the other weapons got thrown down the chasm. So, that's a plus. <laughs> I blame Listen the party for not saying that verbally, okay? I blame the party. Because <laughs> if you all you noticed it and said, that's a cursed item, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. I don't know that they could say that it was a cursed item. They might be able to say... Um, that, uh... That looks like the bad items. That, that that looks like items we got rid of recently. Yes. We'll see. Maybe, maybe tonight when you, uh, go to bed I'll get my, roll my one and you guys can have some more, uh, Charlin Berserkers. So that everybody gets like 12 more weapons to roll dice on. Except I won't pick them up. <laughs> and maybe somebody will say, hey, the weapon you're looking looks like theirs. Drop it! Or I'll be able to say, hey, these are the same character that we just bought. But I didn't figure out he was a Berserker, so all I saw was human in cage. No, that's bad. I spent enough time in cage. And then he had frostbite, so I'm like, okay, let me see if I kill him just because to put him out of his memory because I wouldn't have thought about like everybody else. Let me heal them. Mine was, he's already pre-gone. I can kill him. Like, fuck. No, I didn't. Okay, damn. And then I get bit for it anyways. Alright. Dad, I love you. Guys, love you too. thanks for a wonderful game. Uh, Have a good see one. You. See you all next week. Uh, yeah. Uh, Friday. Yeah. I will be late on Friday's game again. Well, you suck. Oh, hopefully I have a car so I'm not as late. And I'll try not to fall asleep. Uh, I can forgive you, Ken. Oh, the, the medication that they got me on. Oh, then I definitely forgive you. <laughs> I, I never know how I'm going to react to it. Sometimes I'm okay, and other times, right, it's like trying to pry my eyes open with a jackhammer. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> so. I had the, uh, a while back... Uh, early 2020 I got a really bad infection and the drugs they put me on I was literally sleeping about 20 hours a day Oh, and I could barely keep my eyes open the, the other four that sounds like when they put me on Oxycontin <laughs> yeah this I don't, I don't know what it was they, but they they said, take these three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> After, like, the first day, that was it. <laughs> Every time, how I go? Wake up for long enough to eat something, take a pill, go back to sleep. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, have a good one. Yep, you too. You know I'm only giving a shit, right, Kenny?
He's probably already gone. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you later. Oh, yeah. Have a good night. You too.